cute, cute new intro in three, two, one. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing a little Q&A. Before I start anything, I just want to say thank you so much Haley for making my new intro and outro for my YouTube videos. Um, if you don't know, I have a friend named Haley who has a booktube channel and I will link it down below. I've talked about her before, but I will just say again, she is wonderful and y'all need to go check out her channel. She was amazing enough to make me an intro and an outro for my videos so thank you so so much Haley. you are literally the best so a couple weeks ago i went to instagram twitter and youtube for questions for q a because my health has not been the greatest as i've said a million times y'all don't need to know again but um, I thought this would be a chill video for me to do. That's what I'm going to be doing today. Before I get into the questions, I just want to say thank you to anyone who gave me a question. I wasn't expecting basically any. So thank you if you sent a question to me. First, we're going to go with Twitter. Go to my Twitter. This one is from my friend Aramis. She said, pretty sure Jane Eyre is your favorite book, right? So why is it your favorite? P.S. I agree. It's such a good book. It's my favorite book because I feel like I'm Jane in a lot of ways. I feel like we've both had a little bit of tragedy in our lives. Well, I think everyone has a little bit of tragedy in their lives. I don't know, I connected with Jane's story a lot. Just gotta say, I love me some Mr. Rochester. I feel like he grew so much in this book and just loves Jane so much, even though he did some horrible things. At the end of the day, he loves this woman with all of his heart. Zach from Zach Tries to Read, Zachary Ryan, asked me two questions. The bookish question he asked me was, what book ending disappointed you or angered you the most? I kind of want to go with the Maximum Ride series. I don't really care right now about the Maximum Ride series because it's out of my brain and I don't really think about it all that often, but back when I read it, I was just so disappointed in how the series wrapped up. I don't remember reading that book. I just remember thinking like, that's the end really <laughs> and his non-buggish question was favorite concert you've been to i went to a panic at the disco concert last year with two of my best friends and i really really loved it we saw Haley kyoko i think that's how you pronounce her name right <laughs> i really love her she was the opener for panic at the disco and panic at the disco is amazing so i really 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 enjoyed both of those performances those are all the questions from twitter so we're gonna move to instagram my lovely friend ashley from ash Heart books asked me do you have an ultimate OTP. So for a TV show, it's got to be Buffy and Angel. That's my ultimate OTP in television <laughs> for sure. I just, I love, I love them so much even though they can never, ever, 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 ever be together. They're the ultimate OTP for sure. <laughs> my book choice, some of y'all may hate me for this, but I don't really care, but I love me some face and in my life. I love Faye Ren Reese from the Akatar trilogy. I love them so much. I don't care if people don't like them. I, I love them. <laughs> I love them a lot. <laughs> she also asks, what is your favorite time of the day to read? Okay, I love to read during the day when the sun is out at least because I really love reading outside. I really love it. So maybe like the evening time when there's still some light out, maybe like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I think that's like the greatest time to get some sun in and read at the same time. My friend Steph from Nefa Entertainment asked me, what is your dream career my dream career okay so my dream overall has always been to be a mother like that's what i want more than anything i know i'm 20 years old but i tell my friends all the time how like if i'm at the love of my life right now and we got married i would have a baby right now i don't care i mean thinking that we were also financially stable i would have a baby right now that's like my dream in life is to be a mom it's always been my dream in life if it were a perfect world and i'm at the love of my life right now and we had enough money to have a family right now and i got married had a kid i'm one of those people who i feel like i would be perfectly happy being a mom as a job like if that were the perfect 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 life for me if my job was just to be a mom to my kids i would actually really really love that that's just me personally i know people out there like really want to have a career that's I do too I really want to earn that degree to be able to teach but I'm saying in a perfect setting I wouldn't mind 
being a stay-at-home mom. I really wouldn't. I know it's not a perfect world though and I know my chances of achieving that are very 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 slim. I will say even if I was a stay-at-home mom I think a dream of mine would be to write a book to become a writer and that was what I was planning to get as a degree going into college is to get an English degree but then I also realized halfway through my first semester that I don't need a degree in English to be a writer. I, I don't. So I knew that if I needed a job I needed something that would pay me for sure. So I really love kids like that's one of my main passions in life is taking care of kids. My dream job other than writing a book and being a mom is being a elementary school teacher. So that's what I am planning to do with my life right now. <laughs> she also asks, what's your favorite film? Okay, if we're talking animated films, I gotta go with Swan Princess. It's so underhyped. This is literally my favorite movie as a child. And Derek from this movie, I literally thought of him as my husband through most of my childhood. <laughs> if we're talking not animated films, I gotta go with the classic The Breakfast Club for sure. She also asks, do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. I have a younger sister named Logan. She is around two, two and a half years younger than me. She is just about to graduate high school and head off to college. So my friend Danny, hi Danny, asked me, what are your long-term goals for your channel? I just really love doing this because I love talking to people about books because in real life, I maybe only have like two people I can talk to with about books, one of them being Danny, but she's also <laughs> across the country right now. So I can't really talk to her as much as I would like to. I don't know, it's always been kind of like a dream of mine to be a booktuber and be able to reach a bunch of different people throughout the world about books. So I don't know, I guess being able to connect with more people is my long-term goal here. <laughs> On Instagram, once upon my bookshelf asked me, what are your favorite genres to read? Love your channel, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> my favorite genres are obviously romance. I love me some romance of any kind, historical, fantasy, contemporary, anything romance you can just throw up my way. I'm just a big sucker for it. I have also been loving classics at the moment. Classics of Thon is going on right now. I really love classics. I've also been getting a little bit more into urban fantasy because young adult fantasy has been a little bit hard for me because everything's really cliche and tropey at the moment. But urban fantasy, I really love it because you have a little bit of your world in it. Right now I'm currently reading the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor and it's an urban fantasy book and I am really, 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 really loving it at the moment. Okay, now we're going on to the YouTube comments that I got. Hannah from Snow White Raider asked me, what would you recommend for someone trying to get into romance? I, I gotta think about this. I gotta look at my shelves, okay. If you haven't really read all that much romance, I say probably maybe start with Come Back to Me by Mila Gray. I know that a lot of people who aren't used to romance books are probably a little bit uncomfortable with the more steamy scenes. I don't think this book all that much steam to it at all. I mean, it's not like some other books that are on my shelves, let's just say. We have our main character who had a crush on her brother's best friend since as long as she can remember, but he's never really noticed her. Her brother and his best friend go and I think employ into the army and they come back from their four year deployment I think that's the right term. And our main character, man named Ket, finally gets enough courage to tell this woman how he feels. And she is still in high school. So I think it's a good introductory book to romance. Hannah also asked me, what are books that remind you of Jane Eyre? Okay, we obviously have like Jane Eyre retellings. We have My Lady Jane right here, basically a retelling of Jane Eyre. I don't think it's the best one ever written. Looking back on this book though, I don't love it as much as I did when I first read it. Just because Mr. Rochester is put into a whole new light that I didn't really like thinking back on it. But this is, I think, a funny Jane Eyre retelling. I honestly think my favorite retelling of Jane Eyre would be Brightly Burning by Alexa Dawn. This is Jane Eyre set in space. I really enjoyed this one. I also think that a romance book that I've read this year that really reminded me of Jane Eyre is A Nordic King. I think Karina Hale. This is about 
a man falling in love with his nanny. He's a king falling in love with his nanny. And I think that's just like Jane Eyre to a T kind of thing. Um, it reminded me a lot of that. That's why I loved that book. <laughs> the next question is from Yoshi Black Loves to Read. And they asked me, what is your favorite trope in fiction? I really love second chance romance books love that if we're talking about a romance trope. A trope that isn't romance based. I really love people overcoming their obstacles and their past traumas. For example, I know that some people don't really like to read books that contain a lot of trigger warnings. For example, rape, assault, sexual assault, shootings, that kind of thing. I am triggered by some things, um, especially anxiety and um, shootings because I've been affected by one but I love learning how these people overcome those triggers or those hard-hitting topics. I guess I really love hard-hitting topics in books. Hannah from Being the Bookologist asked me, what is your favorite memory you have associated with reading? Oh, whoa, that is a hard question. I got to think it ink dink I don't really have like a specific memory because my memory sucks. <laughs> I do love and remember though how welcoming my parents were to the idea of me reading so many books. They would take me to Barnes & Noble often. When I was growing up I didn't live near a bookstore like I do now and so they would have to take me a little far away to go to a bookstore and I'm eternally grateful for them for doing that but I loved how they kind of like embraced my love for reading since I was very, very, very little, and I still have this love to this day, and they ask me all the time, they don't know how that got introduced into my mind to read so many books. Hannah also asked me if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? I know this is probably a weird one, but a place that I really, really, really want to go to is Poland. And that's probably not everyone's first choice. <laughs> but my favorite book for a while was Salt of the Sea by Bruda Sepetys. This is a historical fiction novel set during World War II and a lot of it takes place during Poland and I honestly before this book did not know that Poland was affected by this war so 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 greatly and I just love that history aspect to it. I'm not really a history person like at all but I feel like when it comes to World War II and the Europe area I'm just a sucker for it so I feel like I would love to go to Poland. <laughs> She also asked me if you could have a pet mythical creature, what would it be? I feel like I'd really love Abraxos from Air of Fire, Throne of Glass series. I just feel like he's a dragon that acts like a cat and like that's perfect for me and I'd love to fly around everywhere with him. I would feel like we'd be best friends. <laughs> she also asked me what is your favorite hobby outside of reading slash booktube? I'm a very big artsy craftsy person. I like to knit. I like to draw, I like to color, I like to paint. I recently got into something called diamond painting. Look it up, Google it. I have been very much into that recently <laughs> because I love puzzles too. And so I told my mom how diamond painting is like puzzles but you get to keep the puzzle afterwards. Like you don't have to take it apart. It's just a picture afterwards that you can keep. <laughs> don't have to take part so I feel like right now diamond painting is my favorite hobby other than reading which is really weird. <laughs> Katie from Book Bliss asked me where is your favorite place you have been and where is one place you dream of going? Favorite place I've ever been would have to be a small little town in Texas called Wimberley. It is like our family's little home away from home. We love going there every year. It's just this country, little, 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 little country town. I've been going there since I was like nine or ten and we go there every year still to this day and it just holds a lot of memories to me so that's why I feel like that's my favorite place to go and I haven't been like anywhere outside of Texas so I don't have anywhere to talk about outside of Texas. Um, One place I dream of going, I already talked about that and that is for sure Poland. Caitlin Abridged asked me, how do you mentally deal with going through the health issues? That's a great question actually. So if y'all didn't know, I have a lot of health issues. <laughs> I have celiac disease, which means I cannot digest gluten. I also have something called postural orthostatic technocardia syndrome. It's a mouthful. We call it POTS for short. This is where I have really thick blood vessels. The blood in my body likes to pool to my lower extremities. My blood likes to pool to my feet, my legs, 
and my hands so I don't get a lot of blood to the brain as often as I would like. I am not allowed to run anymore because with this disorder I have an abnormally really high heart rate. Me jogging across my lawn puts me in danger of putting my heart rate over 200 which is really scary. <laughs> So I'm not allowed to run anymore, so I can't work out as well as I would like to. Right now I'm going through some health issues. We don't really know what the full extent of them are, but we're like 90% sure I have anemia. We think that I might have a histamine issue, don't know what that really means but basically certain foods cannot be digested from me things that carry high histamine i cannot digest in my body so that's like a tomatoes chocolate alcohol tea food dyes and a bunch of other things i'm having a little bit of a hard time with this because for example they think that i might be anemic and one of the main foods you're supposed to eat if you're low on iron is spinach and i really love spinach actually but then spinach is a high histamine so i cannot eat spinach because then i might black out and get dizzy and just pop on the floor it's it's hard finding a balance to answer your question sorry i needed to talk about what all my issues were first mentally dealing with all this stuff is actually a struggle i face daily and it's been mentally really challenging since i was seven years old and i was diagnosed with celiac disease i mean it's really hard when you're seven years old and you go to a birthday party and you can't have birthday cake you can't have snacks you can't have anything you have your own lunch box full of your own food that you have to eat off to the side back then there was not ready-made cake for you like at a store there still is not ready-made gluten-free cake that you can buy in a store you have to go through the process of buying a cake mix or back then making it from scratch so i did not have the luxury of every time i went to a birthday party as a kid to bring my own piece of cake because we didn't have the time or the money to do that so i would maybe get a little candy bar and that would be my cake for the night or i'd get one reese's cup and that'd be my cake for the night let's just say i had plenty of days where i cried because i couldn't eat what everyone else was eating right now with the health issues that i'm going through my doctor put me on a really really organic diet see if things that don't have histamine in them will make me feel better and i don't know it's just really hard it's hard to have that self-control i do have days where obviously i feel depressed i felt depressed because of my issues before i totally have when i was first diagnosed with pots i was so depressed because i had to go through regular therapy physical therapy and it was really 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 draining for me it is still draining now but not as much as it was then i will say i do still get mentally unstable with the health issues that are going on with my life sometimes they pile up on one another like daily and that's when i snap and it doesn't really help my anxiety too because i have really severe anxiety and social anxiety so i'm trying my best to deal with these things then i think the mental aspect will click and be better than it is right now once time goes on <laughs> sorry if that answer was really long my friend Amy from Book Girl Abroad asked me, what are your favorite tropes? I already talked about this. I really love a second chance romance and I really love hard hitting topics. I also actually really love second chance romance and like friends to lovers. I really love those books where like they were friends back in the day and then they meet again years later and they end up actually falling for each other, that kind of thing. I really love that. She also asks romance specific tropes. I already said that one. She also asked me what are some bookish buzzwords? Quirky. I love quirky main characters, nerdy main characters in romance books. Assassin. I love that for a buzzword. I love like a kick-ass female character. That's a total buzzword. She also asks what's your favorite place you've ever been? I already talked about that. Wimberley, Texas for sure. She also asks, do you prefer standalones or series? Okay, I love both because <laughs> I have a favorite series and I have favorite standalones. Right now, I'm really loving standalones at the moment and I kind of really love how a book is kind of like neatly wrapped up in a bow at the end of a standalone and you don't really have to wonder like, oh, what if? Her last question and the last question for this video is your favorite characteristics in a character. I really love when someone shows their kindness in a book, how they display that kindness and how they show their compassion. I really love that in a book because I love learning how people are compassionate in real life. So anyways, there y'all have it. Those were some questions that I answered. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I had a really fun time answering these questions. Hopefully this video was not too long.
If y'all have any more questions for me, be sure to leave them down in the comments down below. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!